Welcome back to Find Your Force. My name's Harry Benjamin. This is Aaron, and we are currently in an airfield in Oxfordshire driving around this off road circuit, being flung left, right, and centre uh, in this uh, pretty cool retro old school Land Rover Defender. And Aaron, I mean, you've displayed some pretty high level driving skills so far as we attempt to go down one of the very, very steep hills here into a muddy puddle that's got so many divots and tire marks and tire tracks trying to navigate our way through. Let's talk about the car we're in. You've been talking so highly about it already. And I mean, look, Land Rover Defenders aren't the most comfortable of cars, but can you tell me maybe a bit why people use them for stuff like this? Where's the exit? Uh, where we choose it to be. Oh my lord! So it mainly just because they're so versatile in the sense of that they can sort of go over uh, any and all terrain, so be it from sort of like if, you, if for example farmers, you know, they may drive uh, on the tarmac and on the roads and then they may enter a very boggy field. Uh, they're just very versatile, versatile in what they can actually sort of do and what they're capable of. Uh, there's not much really that they can't do and there's not many terrains uh, that they can't overcome uh, with the right skill and the right driver aids engaged. And this, this particular Land Rover Defender, can a civilian go out and get this exact same one? Uh, yes, yeah, so the equipment on this is pretty much standard uh, across the civilian uh, equivalent models. As such, in fact, they may have uh, just more luxuries uh, than perhaps uh, this one does. But so most will all come with four-wheel drive. Uh, most will come with uh, lockable diffs and a high and low ratio gearbox. Uh, so yeah, there's nothing stopping uh, anyone from going out and buying one of these. Uh, perhaps some better, perhaps some worse. Now, I'm wondering if uh, you can kind of talk us through a little bit about what, what you're doing right now, what's going through your mind as we're driving through a puddle and up a hill. Uh, so mainly we're just sort of scanning the ground ahead, we're, sort of, we're looking at the best route that we can take, uh, we're looking at what driver aids are going to be needed, uh, so for example we're currently on a bit of a, a sort of cliff edge, so the view is quite restricted, so we're going to select uh, low ratio, we've got our diff locks in, we're going to select first gear and we're going to sort of slowly creep over the edge uh, and we're going to let the engine uh, do the braking, so we're not going to touch the brakes, we're just going to let the engine take us down, uh, as we get towards the bottom we're sort of looking up, we know that we're going to need uh, the drive range still engaged to make it up the hill. We're also going to need quite a lot of torque and some speed. So we'll select second gear and we'll sort of let it work its way up the hill. Uh, as it works its way up, as soon as we get to the top, we're going to wheeze off uh, the accelerator. And again, we're going to let the engine brake in, carry us down the hill. Uh, as we come to another night pitch, we'll select first. And again, we'll let the engine just sort of take us down. Uh, seeing at the bottom of uh, the dip, it's muddy, so we're going to need a little bit of power just to sort of get us through uh, the mud and swamp, just so we don't end up stopping uh, in a bit of a ditch, which is not ideal. And then as soon as we've made it through that, you're always looking towards the next obstacle, uh, sort of scanning the ground, looking at what drive range you need, looking at what the best gear is to be in. Uh, see that it's, you know, it's, it's quite flat, it's not too bad, it's not too arduous. You know, we can just sort of continue with a, a nice steady pace until we come to the next sort of knife edge where Again, we'll select uh, an appropriate gear and we'll let the engine just take us down gently. And so when you first arrived here, you'd not driven this before, you'd not seen it. What was the, what's the first thing you're thinking of even before you get onto the track? Uh, so the first thing you're thinking of is uh, you, know, you sort of want to make sure that you, you do a bit of a side lap. So you want to make sure that you, you know what you're getting into. Uh, so you could choose to walk around the track or you could choose to take a very slow uh, sort of path around the track and just make sure that you know every obstacle that you're going to come up against uh, the vehicle is capable of uh, sort of completing that task without risk of sort of injury to the vi yourself or the vehicle. And if someone is thinking about doing this more often what should they be wary of? So I think uh, the biggest thing to be wary of is sort of overconfidence, uh, which is although it is very important. You don't know better than the road in front of you. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, so just make sure that you know you're fully aware of uh, sort of what the vehicle can do, what its capabilities are, and also know your own driver limits, know what you're capable of, uh, and know sort of your limitations. Uh, and first of all, mainly just sort of make sure whatever you do, you do it as safe as humanly possible. Uh, make sure you wear the correct equipment, make sure you wear the helmet, uh, make sure that again you don't have sort of your arms flailing outside the vehicle. 
uh, just basically know you've got an escape plan should anything go wrong. Yeah, we uh, we both had a safety briefing, didn't we, before we uh, we got into the car. Oh, a little bit of welly over the hill. Oh, <laughs> that felt a bit tricky. What, all under control? All under control. <laughs> all under control. Now, what, so what other vehicles have you driven uh, outside of Land Rover Defender on terrain like this? So on terrain like this, I've drove uh, the 6, 9 and 15 ton uh, Man SV, which I guess is a sort of cargo carrying truck. Uh, I've also driven an armoured EPLS uh, and an armoured Oshkosh, uh, which is a, a say, bulk fuel carrying vehicle. How does this compare to those? Uh, so a lot more bouncy. Uh, potentially a lot more tricky, purely the fact that obviously we only have four wheels as well. Uh, you know, your 15 ton SV, uh, it has got eight, so you've got eight points of traction all over the floor, uh, and an awful lot more power. Uh, despite having a lot more weight, they have got a lot more poke to get up, uh, sort of sharp hills and anything. But by far, this is this is the most fun. <laughs> this is not a bad way to spend a Tuesday afternoon, is it? If no. uh, if anybody's looking to get into this kind of thing on the regular. Land Rover Defender, is that, is that the vehicle of choice or is there anything else you think might might be a bit more fun or, or a bit better suited? Uh, so do, it depends on massively what you want and also what you're going to uh, use the vehicle for when you're not doing this. Uh, but if off-roading is sort of like the only goal for the vehicle then no, Land Rover Defenders are, in my opinion, uh, one of the best uh, that are out there to do the job. Best experience on off-road on an off-road track and worst experience on an off-road track uh so best experience uh for example just days like today where you know oh. there's the uh the weather's quite good the conditions are a little bit muddy a little bit slidey a little bit tricky uh but overall there's sort of no stress to me or the vehicle uh probably worst experience is, is uh obviously night time poor weather poor conditions poor viewing conditions where you can't really see what you're doing or uh you have to crawl around at the snail's pace yeah. just to ensure that you're doing everything correctly and safely. Have you had any particularly scary moments in those kind of conditions? Uh, no, as touch wood I've been quite fortunate in that uh, we've never really had any sort of issues. Uh, we've never, never had any bad experiences thankfully. Well thank you so much Aaron for uh, taking me around this track and showing me exactly what you're thinking as you're doing it and uh, getting to know a little bit about what this Land Rover Defender can achieve. If you get the chance to do this kind of thing, I would absolutely recommend it and I've just been a passenger. Whoa. Whoa. Well I'll tell you what, considering you've only done that, what, once before? I thought well, you had well, that all right. What did you think of it? First time around an off-road track here, how was it? Uh, it was really good. Yeah, the, side of the road surface is quite uh, buggy in places, but no, overall it was really good. No, that was bumpy, it was muddy, but at least it didn't rain as well. And I'm glad we had a Land Rover Defender to do it in as well. That's yeah. about the best choice of car for it. Definitely. Well, I certainly hope you get the chance to do it if you're able to. I can't recommend it enough. And if you want to find out anything more about what we've chatted about, you can do so. Just head to our socials or head online for more. The most important thing before you start is to call for help. So if, help! if you found someone, you just pull that Spitfire around incredibly tightly. So the airframe can only take a certain amount of Gs. 